Hello and welcome. I'm Bob La Liberté, Principal Analyst at the Cube Research, and we're coming to you today from the New York Stock Exchange. And I've got a couple great guests today. We've got Sudhir Mata from Juniper and Jonathan Orlando from SiriusXM. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Thank you, Bob. So, Jonathan, I wanted to start with you. Um, clearly, you've got a fairly large network. You're responsible for providing a lot of different experiences. Could you tell us maybe a little bit more about your network and what are some of the unique requirements for SiriusXM? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, at SiriusXM, obviously, we're the uh, one of the, the largest audio entertainment companies in the United States today. Um, we, uh, my team, uh, manages the network uh, anywhere between the studios, the uh, corporate data centers, the uh, on-air, uh, you know, uh, descriptive uh, type of uh, podcast uh, topics that we go through, um, and then also the uh, cloud-native solutions that we do with regards to um, our streaming uh, products that are non-satellite based. So, uh, you know, it, in, uh, in our environment, we have uh, lots of different uh, devices, lots of different users, uh, lots of different requirements, and, uh, and we go through uh, lots of different, um, you know, uh, situations where there's um, better technologies that are out there available for us to use. So I think that, uh, you know, given the different kinds of topologies that exist in the network engineering space today, I think that we, we kind of uh, use almost all of them. Uh, Got it. And so what specifically, where have you deployed Juniper in your environment? So uh, in our environment, we, we are a MIST shop. Uh, we uh, we just recently completed our deployment of uh, MIST AI uh, within our, all of our studio facilities as well as uh, our corporate offices. Um, we uh, also a, are a MX uh, routing customer. Uh, okay. So we, we deployed uh, our own uh, uh, MPLS-based uh, routing topology across the, the country for our broadcast as well as our corporate networks. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome, and maybe you could explain to the viewers as well, what type of role did these deployments, were they part of a digital transformation? Was it part of a network modernization? What was driving you to upgrade the network environment? Yeah, so I mean, uh, myself and my uh, my leadership team came into Sirius XM uh, just over uh, two two and a half years ago. Um, so you know, we had the opportunity to kind of take a look at the environment, uh, you know, uh, make the opportunity to, uh, you know, kind of do a, a reset, right, so to speak, of, and look and see what the what the what was out there, what are the requirements that we needed to solve for. Uh, we knew we wanted to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, more cloud native for most of our mm -hmm. products. We, we knew we wanted to have AI integrations into uh, uh, how we did things. And, uh, you know, we kind of evaluated all the products uh, that were out there. And uh, that's when we came across uh, the Juniper team and, uh, you know, uh, did some evaluations with, uh, with their new products. Got it. And so what specifically, what were the capabilities or the features that you saw within MIST and MIST AI that made it a, the right choice for you and your team? So I think that, uh, you know, Obviously, like uh, most of the folks on my team and myself worked in network engineering for, for a long time. Um, you know, most of the, the wireless uh, technologies that are out there are, you know, your, your typical controller-based, uh, you know, local access uh, type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rollouts. Uh, MIST, I think, did, um, you know, a big uh, jump to the, the cloud-native platform that allows us to kind of uh, manage from a one pane of glass uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, have built-in integration to troubleshoot, uh, you know, issues so that our our IT teams and our, our local on-site folks can kind of have much more information in front of them when yeah. there's there's issues for for people uh, that are experiencing things. And in SiriusXM, we have uh, you know, you know, typically you have your users who com would complain about a, a wireless issue. Like these are these are talent, right? This is uh, you know, like celebrities and musicians that come into our office. So. You know, you definitely don't want to make them upset, right? You want to make sure that they're happy and yeah. everything is working as the production needs are, are required. So, uh, so yeah, that was part of the evaluation process that we did before we selected that as a vendor. Awesome, so one of the things I'm always curious about is time to comfort. So when you're deploying a new technology, so it sounded like you're doing a lot of switching. You're going from you know, on-premises to cloud-based management, moving to probably not having AI to having AI. Maybe you could share a little bit with the viewers as to how that, you know, what that transition was like 
from a, not so much from the technical standpoint, but from the cultural standpoint. How long did it take your team to get really comfortable? Were they excited about it at first? Were they reluctant and had to, <laughs> and had to grow into it and then learn the value of it? I wonder if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I said, uh, you know, we, you know, most of the folks on my team, uh, you know, came from legacy deployments where you have a controller access point model where, you know, you're doing tunneling, you're doing, uh, you know, uh, you know, conditions back to whether it's multiple sites, single sites, uh, you know, so moving to a cloud uh, native platform was very, uh, people were, were hesitant, right? They, they wanted to really like uh, do as much testing and validation as we possibly could do before we actually rolled it out into the production environment because once it's there, it's yeah. very difficult to, to, to roll back, right? So, um, you know, I, I would say that uh, working with the Juniper team, uh, you know, they have uh, great resources, their sales team, their services team, uh, you know, basically provided us all the information and details that we needed uh, to make us feel comfortable day one when we rolled it out in our, our you know, our, our crown jewel site of New York City here, um, you know, that it was it was going to work as we needed it to, so. Okay, and then one last question for you, I promise, that I'll go over to Sudhir, but, because I'm really curious about this, so you've got it in, it's in production, obviously you've got a lot of talent who's very demanding and want to have the best possible experiences. How have the outcome, what have the results been like so far from the deployment? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've significant uh, decrease in, in, in reports of issues when it comes to the wireless environment, right? The flexibility that it gives us to, uh, uh, you know, set up our, like I said, our, our events uh, in, environments or whether it's a, you know, large group of people are coming into the, the studio to record or to, to, to do uh, some kind of a production rollout. Um, you know, I, I don't have the, the numbers in front of me, but, but our, it significantly reduced our IT uh, support, uh, you know, uh, requests uh, uh, over time. Awesome, which then gives your team more time to work on some of the more strategic initiatives that are exactly. fun to work on. Exactly. exactly. Cool. Sadir, go shift over to you. <laughs> so we just heard a lot about what's going on at Sirius XM. What are your thoughts on this? Is this really? I mean, have you heard similar stories to Jonathan's? And you know, uh, you know, maybe maybe start there, and then I'll I'll, I'll go from there. Th thank you, Bob. First of all, let me start with. You know, uh, it's been a great partnership with Sirius XM, uh, and, and it, right down to the product level, we're partnered, we get feedback, we, uh, you know, uh, and building the full stack with the team, it's been phenomenal. So, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, our experience and ask is always, you know, we want our customers to treat us as a part of their team, right? We want to be a, a, a partner to them, not a vendor to them. So that's that's our number one barometer, and that's why uh, uh, with Jonathan and his entire team, uh, um, it's been of tremendous partnership. Uh, relative to how does this compare with some of the other customers, right? So, uh, you know, in a variety of verticals we've seen, three things happen whenever they come to Juniper Mist. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's always the fastest deployment they've ever done in networking. It's, uh, it's uh, the fewest complaints they've gotten on the network uh, since a very long time, and then it's it's a it enables and liberates you into a digital transformation. Meaning, the the network can be completely programmable, and and the visibility ties you with end to end. And then uh, lastly, um, it it enables you to do digital experiences indoors as well, right? So so. Um, the fastest deployment, fewest tickets, and, and a digital platform, the network as a platform, is sort of the outcomes we see in retail, in healthcare, in higher ed, in enterprise, across the board, consistent outcomes. Got it. And from, a, from an adoption perspective, from a driver's perspective, are you seeing, is it digital transformation? Is it modernization? Is it that need to to support a better experience for you, right? We all know the network has gotten far more distributed. Users are at home, they're back, right? They're coming into the office. People want to entice them back in. Right. So we've heard a lot about reimagining that office and making it more of an experience, a better experience for them. Are you seeing things like that from your organizations as it, well? It, it's funny, Bob. Um, one of the CIOs of, of a large bank here in New York, uh, he said, you know, before the pandemic, when he went to present a digital transformation to the CEO, he said in seven minutes they shut down his presentation and said, we don't need to make it attractive for employees to be in the office. I mean, they're expected to be in the office, right? Post-pandemic, people are struggling to you know, 
put employees through the commute and, and bring them to the office. Everybody is realizing, okay, we want them in the office. Now, how do we make this experience good, right? Make it really, you know, wow, I got to get to work because the whole experience, the entire experience is, is digital and is enriching, right? And so, yeah, very much digital transformation is a driver. Hybrid workplace is a driver. Um, but with that comes a couple of challenges, right? Our work for, has forever changed, right? You know, there's Teams and Zoom, even when two people are sitting in the same room, right? We're, we're always on collaboration apps. And so being able to understand that experience and be able to triage if something happens, real-time re uh, remediation, all of that has made this front and center. So, yes, the network as a, as, a, as a means for a digital transformation is very much front and center. And with that, the, the need for AI to help drive that forward, that's awesome as well. Awesome, very good. And so maybe back to you, Jonathan. So from along those lines, clearly you're not one that has to force people back into the office because in order for things to get done, people have to be in the office. You've got studios, everyone's <laughs> going to be there all the time. Um, I always like to ask this question because I know, you know we hear anecdotally about, you had said, massively reduced the number of tickets. Did you ever get anyone come back to you and say, hey, wow, that's really good? Did, <laughs> did anyone ever come back to you and say, hey, what did you do differently because I'm having a great experience now? Yeah, I think that, uh, I've, well, I've, as, uh, as somebody who worked in networking for a very long time, right, you know, like you get blamed uh, first for pretty much everything, right? right. So everything, everything is blamed on the network. So I think that the, the, the reality is that, uh, you know, uh, with significant metrics that can show, you know, what the redu re reduction in, uh, in, in issues uh, can solve, I mean, that's, that as a manager, that really kind of shows how you can take those resources and put them towards other things that you, you think are more in focus. And ideally, you know, uh, building more cloud native applications and, and more AI related, uh, you know, technologies, bringing them into your, into your environment. Okay, and, and not to give away any secrets here or anything, but now that you've had some experience with the Mist AI and the wireless and some of the routing capabilities, is this a platform that you could see growing in the organization and expanding? Absolutely, I think that uh, you know we are we are uh, at, at the at the edge of our seat, like looking to see what comes out next uh, with regards to the MITS platform and how we can integrate that much more deeply into our uh, layer two, layer three, uh, layer four uh, strategy uh, within within the application uh, uh, at SiriusXL. Awesome, awesome. That sounds great. Well, I think um, what I'd like to do is is wrap up with asking you both about maybe where you see the networking industry overall going and starting to evolve to in the future and. Um, any inflection points that you see coming up in the future? So uh, you're the guest. So why don't you <laughs> why don't you start first, Jonathan? And then we'll go to Sadir. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, uh, obviously, like you know, the network engine, network industry is is ever changing, right? It's it's always uh, there's new technologies coming out every day. Uh, AI is obviously the, the the buzzword these days, right? For sure. So being able to uh, utilize, uh, you know, um, AI in any way that we possibly can is really, I think, the most important. I think that the key is uh, companies and, and, and organizations that have automation strategies in place, that's where you can really take AI to the next level and, and utilize them for, for future growth. Um, with regards to the, the network industry though, it's, it's definitely interesting to see how some of the big players are you know, consolidating these days and uh, you know, as, a, as, a, as a leader, uh, you know, uh, I have to make sure that uh, we understand exactly what's going on and, and, and what can be done um, to kind of preempt some of the changes that potentially may come down the flight. Got it, understood, yeah. Uh, sit here, wait. Yeah. how about yourself? Uh, Bob, I'm going to start at a cultural level first. Okay. Um, you know, for the last 20 years, networking engineers were like, I wish nobody knows my name, I wish I was invisible, and, and just, you know, hopefully no one notices there's a network, right? I mean, <laughs> that used to be our past. Today, I think leaders like Jonathan are sitting at the table talking about digital transformation, driving the organization's mission. I think culturally, we've brought networking to be at, at the grown-up table uh, and, and really driving the company's business, right? And so we've seen this in verticals, in, uh, in retail, in healthcare. You know, one of the hospital networks uh, we've deployed nationwide, um, as a veteran comes in, they get turn-by-turn -turn navigation to their doctor. You know, you know, they get, they can actually see someone bring a wheelchair to them. It's the the reduction in stress level for a patient that walked into a large hospital. It's right. it's immeasurable, right? So, so the outcomes are there. So, uh, the inflection points as we look forward, uh, I would say, are twofold. First, there's no question, AI 
AI is a means to the end, uh, and and the end here is how can AI drive significant optimization and resources, liberating IT to do strategic projects, and and so how can and and how can AI solve you know auto remediation, self healing, that kind of stuff. So no question, AI is an inflection point, and then the second is. For the first time in the industry, we're able to measure experience, collect, collate, and curate users' experience minutes. What does that mean is if you and Jonathan and I are on a Teams call, and the two of you are having a great experience, if I was having a bad experience, my user minutes, my bad user minutes, I can collate to the network and say, hey, what was happening on the network specific to me that yep. you both were not experiencing? So we are going down this path of, of collecting this experience data, collating it with the network, and making meaning of it end to end, and then you know we, we we launched a feature called Marvis Minis, and what that does is truly turns you proactive to the network, right? So so it's about using AI to create efficiencies. It's about measuring experience so we can deliver a better experience. And third is really just you know you know being proactive to the network. There's so much potential. I feel like we are at the 20 yard line and we have a long way to go that that we could innovate and so it's an exciting time to be networking yeah i i couldn't agree with you more so just did some joint research the cube research did it with zk research one of the the data points was um you know do you feel your network is more important to achieving business objectives than it was two years ago uh 93 said more or much more important to achieving our business objectives so for the first time, right, what's always been considered plumbing is now suddenly getting, hey, we need this. This is yes. super important, especially as the environments become more distributed, right? You've got locations all around, data's all across the globe, things scattered between data centers, edge, and public clouds. So we're really seeing, I think, a little bit of a renaissance of the networking is more important and that the AI component is becoming adopted. In that same research, we asked how they're leveraging AI, and we typically see this bell curve where it's 20% say we're just using it for alerts. The other 20% say we want it for full automation. And then the 60% in the middle is saying, I want the alert and recommendation and the ability to do some manual automation. So your point about tying in the, the AI to automation, we're definitely seeing that come along. I think what's going to take, again, this is that time to comfort. Let me hit the automation button 10 times in a row. And then the next time when it comes up, don't ask me, just That's just right. do it and then tell me you did it and everything's fine and, and working good. So yeah. I'm super excited to see how AI impacts the network and network operations and ultimately those experiences and the, and the connectivity that's, that's being delivered. So I think there's a, a lot of exciting times for us to come in the networking space and I'm definitely looking forward to, to following how that happens across the industry and hearing from how innovative customers like yourself are using the technology and deploying it to, to better your businesses as well. Awesome. Well, look, this is this has really been a, a great conversation. I think we're out of time for today, but I want to thank you both for being on, and I want to thank everyone who's watching for joining us today. Again, uh, Bob La Liberté from the Cube Research coming to you from the New York Stock Exchange with Juniper Networks in Sirius XM. Thank you very much.